ओके सो टुडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग ओके सो फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट क्लास वी हैड लेफ्ट वन टॉपिक विच इज़ टेक्स टू कॉलम्स बेसिकली वॉट इज़ टेक्स टू कॉलम्स इफ यू हैव इफ यू आर यूजिंग विंडोज देन यू माइंड हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज नोट पैड इफ यू आर यूजिंग मैक बुक देन यू माइंड हैव समथिंग डिफरेंट विच इज सिमिलर टू नोट पैड सो फॉर फॉर दिस थिंग वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट वेन द data is collected okay so it generally gets collected in the form of uh, a notepad or a csv file uh, and generally you will see the data to be comma separated or maybe tab separated something like that if you have to import if you want to import this data into your uh, excel file then how can you do that i'll just show you uh, let me open this particular file all right so here for example i want to copy paste this data which you can see name age gender and these are comma separated values right so what i will do is i will simply copy and control c for copy and you can paste it over here and you can paste it over here control v the moment you paste it the moment you paste it what is happening the moment one second let me start the recording okay so what happens when you paste the values you can see that the values are coming in a single cell name age gender these are coming in one single cell rita 45 f f stands for female com comes into one cell now how do you wa i want to separate it in two different columns i don't want it to be comma separated i want it to be separated through different different columns now how can i do that for that you have to just select all the cells go to the data tab go to the data tab in your data tab you have something called as text to columns select this text to columns next comma and once you click on comma you see the values are now the values are now you can see the preview so what are delimiters um, again i'll just show you there is something called as delimited and fixed width fixed width basically means when the values are maybe Uh, separated with spaces in between generally the values are never uh, separated with spaces it are it is generally separated by comma or maybe colon or maybe tab right if it is separated by space then you can simply select this fixed width option if it is separated through any different method then you use something called as delimited what is delimited delimiters are basically uh, separators comma separators or maybe tabs or maybe colon these are different space separators which we call it as uh, delimiters i'll just click on next i have selected the delimited option and then you select the option of comma over here right we have semicolon we have space and we have other limiters if you have something different other than these you can just se select this and you can suppose i have star so you can just put that star mark over here right so we don't have these we just have comma separated values i have selected comma i'll and you can see the preview so now we have good three columns i'll click on next and we'll click on finish the moment you do that you see all your data has now separated through the columns right so you can just simply create a notepad right you can simply use a text box you can write these things values make sure these are only comma separated if you have any other separator along with it it will not work make sure either it's comma separated or it's just semicolon or space something similar it should be same then you just simply copy paste over here and in the data tab we have something called as text to columns in the data tools group this is known as a group within the data tools group we have text to columns right this is how your text to columns will work is it clear all right so now let us move yes ma'am your screen is blur my screen is blur is it same yeah. for everyone uh let me check yes ma'am mm okay let me check this i don't think it should be blur is it for okay i uh, do one thing you all just click on that pin option to pin my screen 
and then you can pinned it, and then you can use the full screen option yeah, yeah, still it's full screen but actually i guess it's uh, something issue with your internet like your internet is slow or something because your uh, your picture is also blur it's not just the screen okay so it's uh, let me just check Is it better? No. No, ma. Let me do one thing. Wait. Mm. Is it better now? Can you all just simply pin yes. the screen? All right. Yes, great. 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 Okay. 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 So, uh, <clears throat> okay. Let's get back to it. So now I think now I hope is it fine. Text to columns. You might not use it on a daily basis a lot to be very honest, but it's something which you should know because it's very important when you are importing any text to your data, and we will deal with a lot of data. So you should know how to. Uh, do this particular thing i hope it's fine with everyone text to columns right great so now let's move to the next topic actually we'll be starting with the functions today so we have done basic features in our previous class now we'll be starting with good you know functions so i will be first showing you all how so i'm using a data set over here it's a very small data actually this was a very large data which i was uh, i had with me uh, about an insurance company so we have the age of different policy holders so basically i had more than uh, 1400 rows but i've just taken a just a small synopsis of it so that it is easier and simpler for you all to work with if you all want i can also share the original csv file with you all that you all can copy paste in your excel and you all can work with it okay so we have age of different policy holders who are with us we have the gender of different policy holders we have bmi which is body mass index this body mass index is basically calculated using um your uh, weight and your height then we have the number of children then we have whether the person is a smoker or a non smoker then we have the region the person belongs from we have southeast southwest northeast and northwest and then we have the charges with us right so these are the different data sets which i have with me now what i will do is i will perform some basic calculations on this data firstly we know that excel can be used as a calculator right so there are few basic things which we can perform so i will i will use it i will use my excel as a basic calculator how we can do this so what i will do let me just take very simple uh task over here let let me just take a very simple task when you are writing any function in excel so now we will be starting with functions in excel so when you are writing any function in excel what do you do is you write you start with an equal to sign equal to sign tells excel that the next thing which you are going to write will be a function right equal to sign tells excel that whatever you will write next will be a function will be considered as a function so for example i want to do 5 plus 10 i will use simple plus sign over here simple addition sign and this will give me 15 Say, similarly you can use minus sign 7 minus 3 similarly you can use division sign which is a slash sign over here 4 divided by 2 you can use multiplication sign which is 4 multiplied by 3 any any uh you know symbol so we have plus we have minus 
we have division and we have multiplication and also we have to the power so suppose i am writing 2 2 to the power maybe 6 2 to the power 6 2 raised 6 so we get 64 so this is basically these are basic arithmetic operators which we have in excel arithmetic operators which we have in excel right these are the basic arithmetic operators that we have in excel oh, i think i'm giving it a wrong spelling all right so these are the arithmetic operators now similarly we have we can also you know uh, so this was just simply you know giving two numbers you can give more than two numbers you can also select the cells how can we select the cells for example i want to do um, bmi let me keep it like this let me okay so for example i want to I want to divide BMI by age. I want to divide BMI by age. Right? So I will simply select the BMI cell and you can see the it's highlighted in color blue. I am dividing it with age. And I will just drag this down. Now I want to do the same thing for all the values. So will you sit down and perform the same thing for all the cells? No. Excel is very interactive. You can just take your cursor to the bottom right. You will see it changes into a plus sign and you can just drag the button down. The moment you drag this, you will see we have in this particular cell, we have C2. C2, this is cell C2 divided by A2. This is cell A2, right? And once you drag this down, what is happening? This C2 is changing to C3 and A2 is changing to A3. Similarly, it's changing to C4, A4. So when you are dragging your cursor down, your formula, your value is increasing by one row number. Column is not changing. Column is column C and column A, which is intact, which is fixed. What is changing? Only the row numbers. The row numbers are increasing, right? Clear? Great. So this is how you just simply wrap. What could have been the other option over here? I could have simply just, you know, take your cursor to the wall. This is known as autofill. The, when the cursor changes into a plus sign, it's known as an autofill. You just simply double click over here and you will see that the value fills up along the entire column, right? So here what I've done, I've divided BMI by age. So BMI by age age right correct correct so this is how we now now for example i shift my cursor to the right i take this cursor to the right what do you think what will happen this is c2 divided by a2 when i'm dragging down the row numbers are increasing by one when i will take it to the right when i will take it to the right we get a error over here just you know forget the error see what happens your c2 divided by a2 is changing to d2 divided by b2 so what is happening the row num the column names are increasing by one c2 is getting b2 uh, d2 and a2 is becoming b2 so basically the row the column numbers are increasing by one right correct 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 this is known as cell referencing and now this is very very important that we are going to learn is how can you make, make your cell referencing constant for example when i want to shift this cursor to the right when i want to shift this value to the right i do not want actually you know what is happening when i'm shifting the cursor we are actually copy pasting the values so suppose i'm copy Control C, copying the cell and pasting it over here. When you paste it over here, you paste everything together. You paste, remember last class we were discussing paste special. So basically you're pasting everything. You're pasting the value, you're pasting the formatting, you're pasting everything over here. So when you're pasting the value, when you're pasting the function, you're actually shifting it to the right, one right. So C2 is becoming D2, A2 is becoming B2. For example, I will copy paste this value over here. Not here, maybe. 
over here now what is happening see because we have shifted two columns to the right your c2 is becoming e2 and a2 is becoming c2 two columns ahead you are moving two columns ahead because you are taking your value from here to here you are moving two columns ahead so this is how this is how your referencing will change this is known as relative referencing what is relative referencing relative referencing is when you drag your cursor down when you drag your cursor to the right your values will change your functions your cell referencing will change correct now suppose i do not want these things to change i want it to be fixed i want c2 to be fixed i want a2 to be fixed for that i will insert something called as dollar signs you will see on top of your uh, number pad on top of 4 we have dollar signs so you will just put in dollar signs over here you will just simply put in dollar signs over here in front of c in front of 2 what these dollar signs will do is that it will make my cell fixed so it will make the cell c2 fixed it will make a2 fixed now what i will do is again if i just try to drag this down see what happens i'm getting the same value because the c2 remains c2 a2 remains a2 and even if i'm dragging it to the right even if i'm dragging it to the right see c2 remains c2 and a2 remains a2 right got my point got my point so this is known as absolute referencing relative referencing in, is when you can when you shift your columns when you shift your rows it will change absolute referencing or fixed referencing is something when your values your column numbers row numbers will not change now what if what if what if here i am getting a wrongs okay before that again let us learn a shortcut very favorite shortcut of all of us is f4 what you have to do is simply i have selected c4 divide uh, c2 divided by a2 i want to make these as absolute or fixed what i'll do is i will just you know move to c2 take your cursor to c2 click on control uh, click on f4 or you can use fn f4 if your uh, laptop is not working with the just with f4 just you can use the function key fn f4 similarly for a2 you can do fn f4 or simply f4 and you, you don't have to insert the dollar symbols manually you don't have to insert the dollar symbols manually it will come automatically it will come automatically right f4 using the shortcut f4 now again the same thing i will drag this down and what is happening C two and A two is remaining constant, but when I want to drag this down, when I want to drag this down, I want the column to be same, but the row to change. I want C two to become C three, C four, C five, C six, so on. I want A two to change as A two, A three, A four, and so on. So I just want the row numbers to change. I don't want the column numbers to change. If you want to do this, you will use something called as mixed referencing. mixed referencing in this i will just keep dollar sign uh, i will just keep dollar sign in front of the column numbers keeping the column numbers intact but the row numbers are free to change because there is no dollar sign before the row number if you don't have a dollar sign it will change if you don't have a dollar sign it will change right so now if i drag this down now if i drag this down you can see the values are changing but what if i drag this cursor to the right so basically we have c2 over here we have c3 over here we have c4 and so on if i drag this to the right since my c and a are fixed it should not change so i will drag it to the right and you will see c2 still remains c2 because what happens when you are dragging your cursor to the right or you can also drag your cursor to the left you can also drag your cursor to the left see what happens if i'm dividing bmi or maybe let me take um uh let me take bmi divided by age if i will drag this thing to the left you can also drag it to the left when you're dragging it to the left what will happen your Row numbers, your 
again the column numbers will change so why are you getting this error i will show you so we are having c6 and a6 it it should become b6 and something which is before a6 is there any column before a6 no so that is why we are getting a referencing error over here because there is no cell which is before cell a6 right which is on the left of a6 so you can move your cursor even upwards so when you are moving it upwards this is a6 and c6 when you move it upwards it will become it will become a5 and c5 very good it will become a5 and c5 right so when you are moving your cursor up or down when you are pasting your formulas up or down your row numbers will change when you are moving it to the right or left your column numbers will change right so it depends on situations where do you want to keep your row number fixed or whether you want to keep the column number fixed or whether you want to fix both the rows and columns here we just have to fix the columns why why because we don't want the column c and column a to change but we want the row numbers to change so what are we doing we are keeping c and a as fixed when i'm keep dragging it to the right we still have a and c intact clear this is known as mixed referencing referencing now what is the shortcut obviously i'm not going to put dollar signs twice thrice i'm not i will not do this instead i will use a shortcut so what is the shortcut for this listen to this very carefully when you are using F four one time, you are getting a fixed referencing. Both C and two are fixed. Both C and two are fixed. When you are clicking on F four again, now only the row number is fixed. Again, click on F four. Now only the column number is fixed. So basically, when you click on F four once. both row and column is fixed when you are clicking it twice only the row number is fixed when you are clicking it thrice only the column is fixed correct try it all of you if you want i can share this data with you all uh for that uh can i paste it over here for the time being just use your data i will share it in the next class before the next i will share it after the class basically <clears throat> is it fine is it fine let me check if i can get hold of this data set i will share it in the chat box Okay, so I'm sharing the entire insurance data with you all. Uh, this is a CSV file which I'll be sharing. You all can just copy paste the values. So I've pasted in the chat box. Okay, I I will paste it in the chat box. Okay, so I've pasted in the chat box. You all can use this data. Just simply click on this link, and you all be you all will be able to download the. csv file just double click on the csv file so what is the difference between a normal excel and a csv file the csv file also looks exactly so i'll be sharing this insur insurance data i've shared this data with you all so a csv file looks like exactly like an excel file just that it's a comma separated file csv right what you have to do is just simply select first few rows copy and paste it in your normal excel do not start working in the csv file all right just like you have ms word and a text editor what is the difference ms word you can use all the formatting options in a text file you cannot perform any formatting options similarly in a csv file it's just for storing the data it's not for performing any kind of data manipulation or you know uh, formatting your data it is only for a excel file so just simply copy paste the values from here in your excel file and start working with it right so i have shared the entire see uh, insurance data with you all you can you can get multiple data files in 
uh, internet there is something called as kaggle kaggle is the platform where you can get multiple data files in one class i can show you all how to get those right okay so we have learnt about referencing now is it clear to all of you now as we move ahead you all will realize when we have to use what kind of referencing right when to use what type of ref referencing whether it will be mixed referencing absolute referencing or relative referencing it completely depends upon the situation all right so we have done the cell referencing what else we can do is also we can copy paste or we can take values from another sheet so here when we are calculating we are using the values from the same sheet we can also take it from the different sheets i will show you in this class itself um <clears throat> let me create a new sheet over here so here we'll be performing different calculations for example for example i want to use this insurance data only so here we have learned that we have used excel as a calculator so i'm just renaming the sheet here we'll be learning different logical functions and operators different logical functions and operators right that is what we are going to do logical functions and operators right okay so now for example i have this data with me i have this data with me what i want to take out my question over here listen to the question very carefully i want to know whether uh, the age is greater than 20 or not i want to know whether the age is greater than 20 or not this is the question which i am asking right this is the question which i am asking whether the age is greater than 20 or not all right this is the question now how to answer this question we use a function we use a function called if function so what is a if function very simple you give a logical operation see i am not using any ppt or something for you all i will uh, make it very interactive i want all of you all to work with me i have shared the data with you all i will be using such very interesting data this is a very interesting data which i have shared with you all uh, for a beginners level i think this is a great data to work with so i want to know whether the person over here is greater than the age of 20 or not so there is something called as if function that we'll be using now in if function there are in any function this is the first function which we are learning right this is the first function which we are learning in any function when you write you have to provide some inputs for example it's like a grinder you use a grinder you put in vegetables you put in whatever you want to to grind it right so you give certain input to get the output you put in fruits to get a juice you put oranges to get orange juice so similarly grinder is your function and those oranges are your input or the parameters which you have to write and your orange juice is the output so similarly excel works right so here we'll be using again the if function equal to if the moment you write if all the functions in excel which are related let me just zoom in to excel uh control plus all right i think now it's visible so here i'll be using if function the logical test now the moment you open your bracket first of all before that when you write the function if you will get something you will get a line describing about the function so it says checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if true another value if false so you are providing one particular question so i'm asking you a question arushi are you of age greater than 20 this is a question which i am asking to arushi she will answer yes i am or she will answer no i am not so she can answer to any so what what is a logical operator what is a logical function you will only get the answer in the form of a true or a false the answer is always be in the form of a true or a false nothing else 
this is a logical question a logical function or a logical operator right so here i'll be opening my bracket you open your first bracket to give the inputs just like a grinder you open the lid to put in the oranges so you are opening the first bracket to put in your parameters now what is the first parameter what is the first um input which we have to provide it is a logical test that we have to provide it's a logical test that we have to provide now what is the logical test arushi are you greater than 20 is your age greater than 20 so here we are using something called as a logical operator what is a logical operator this greater than sign if is a logical function see these terminologies no one will ask you no one will ask you what is logical operator what is logical function just that when you when you are doing something you should know the terminologies as well this this uh bracket is known as parenthesis in programming language we call it parenthesis so these are the terminologies which you should know so logical test is i will just move to another sheet see what i have done i am in this particular sheet and you can see this particular value is highlighted logical test is highlighted why because we are going to input the parameter or the value for the logical test so this is highlighted in bold now i will move to the calculator sheet the moment you just click on the calculator sheet see what happens your calculator is selected this sheet is selected we have calculator exclamation mark select this a2 select this cell a2 right and then i want to know whether this is greater than so see just see the function just see the function formula bar greater than 20 greater than 20 right this is my first logical this is my first parameter so we have logical test can you see over your logical test i have completed my logical test now i'll give a comma the moment you give a comma you will move to the next parameter which is next input which is value if true so if arushi is greater than 20 she will say yes my age is greater than 20 this is the output this is the value which we want so here i can give any value in quotations whatever i want as an output so i will say yes i just want to say yes why are we putting it in quotations generally when you are writing any character string or you are writing any text string you put it in a quotations <coughs> right so value if true if this is true if this value is true i will get a yes again give a comma we have value if false within the quotations i will write no and simply close my bracket before that did anyone notice that this function this parameter sorry is not within the brackets whereas value if true value if false is within the first uh, third bracket right why is this because when you see any parameter which is within the third bracket it means that it is not a compulsory argument it's an optional argument you can give the argument or you can avoid the argument whenever you see within any function it's up to you that along with the oranges do you want to put salt do you want to put sugar it's up to you so these are optional items that is why it's within the brackets right so now i will just simply close my parenthesis click on enter the moment you click on enter we have something called as no why no the is the age greater than 20 no is the age greater than 20 no that is why i'm getting a answer as no and when you drag this down what will happen what will change this a2 will change to a3 a4 a5 a6 and so on so here we see that the age is 18 and then i think all the ages are above 20 so we are getting yes 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 <coughs> fine fine let me keep it simple for you all mm.
I will copy paste this data there. I just want you all to write a yes in the chat box so that I know that you all have understood the concept. Just give me a yes in the chat box. Great. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right. So now this is if function. Now along with if function, along with if function, you can use multiple other functions. For example, my question over here is age should be greater than 25. Um, 25 is a bit low. Let me keep it as 35. Age should be greater than 35 and and um, the person should be a female. Okay, two conditions. Age should be greater than 35 and the person should be a female. Right? Two conditions. So basically, this is a person who is a female but the age is not 35. So we are going to get no or false. Uh, this person is a female but the age is less than 30, 35 again a false this person is a female but the age is also greater than and the age is also greater than 35 so we're gonna get true for this so how do we do this we are again gonna start with if function but now in the logical test there are two logical te tests which you which you want to give first test is age should be greater than 35 second test is the gender should also be female so both the tests should satisfy, both the conditions should satisfy. So when you want both the conditions to satisfy, you will use AND function, AND function. And within this AND function, you can write one function in another function. So this, this is known as nesting of functions, right? So what I've done, instead of a logical test, I'm writing a function over here. I'm providing another function. This function is a AND function. Right now within the AND function, you can again give certain logical tests. So what is my first logical test that the age should be greater than 35 comma. Second logical test is that the gender should be equal to female. Now, how do we write female? It's a text. So we write it within the quotes. It's a text. So we write it within the quotes. Close the bracket. We have two tests. We have written it with the AND function. Why have we written it with the AND function? Why? Because I want both the conditions to be true. If this is true, I want the value as true or I want the value as no. Or maybe keep it as false. Fine. Great. Great. Hit enter. And see, we have false. Just drag this down. We have true over here. 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 So wherever it is female with age as greater than 35, we will get. Is it fine? Do you have any problem over here? Just see. Right? I want a yes in a chat box. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So now after this, after this, the next thing, so basically I'm using an AND function. So along with AND function, there is something called as OR function. Just like AND, we have OR. Okay, you can use this OR separately as well. 
how can we do the c so suppose i want to know i want to know um the person who can be a male who can be a male or a smoker male or a smoker the person can be a male or a smoker understand the difference so here we can get a male who is a non smoker as well because we we'll get male who is a non smoker no we'll still get true because i want a male or a smoker i want a male or a smoker so any of the two conditions should satisfy what are the conditions gender should be male smoker status should be yes any of the two conditions should be satisfied if any of the two is satisfied we'll get the answer as true right so here i will use simply let's not use the function if let me directly use the function or when you use or what is the first logical test my first logical test is whether the gender is equal to male or the second logical test is whether the smoker status is equal to uh yes clear clear close the brackets and see you are getting the answer as true or false so you are getting true wherever it's a male or it's a smoker so here it's a male but the person is not a smoker still we are getting a true here it's a smoker but the person is female still we are getting a true so this is the difference between and function and a or function and function you mean all the conditions should be true in case of or function any one condition should be true is it fine <clears throat> is it fine similarly there is a not function that we use there is a not function that we use for example i want a uh, smoker or maybe not a smoker so it's a little confusing it's a little confusing agreed now what do we do here is see when i am writing not this equal to yes so what will happen what will happen if this statement is true if this statement this logical test is true your output will be false if this statement is true not true gives you false see so here we are saying is this equal to yes yes this is true not true not true will give us false so basically how do you use not function not function is the inverse is the opposite when the the logical function when the logical function inside this is a yes when the logical function is true not true will give you false <clears throat> see and here the logical test is false this is equal to smoker status is equal to yes the smoker status is equal to yes no it's a false statement is this equal to yes no is this equal to yes no false it's a false statement so not false will give you true not false will give you true is a little, it's a little confusing but we use not function in many of the places um we get not uh we use not function in many of the places where we want to justify something right so here as we move ahead we'll be using not function as well so here what are we doing we are asking whether this is true or not if this is true not true will give you false just see what this explains not when you're typing not changes false to true true to false got it it changes true to false and false to true 
so here basically this is true but it is cha changing to false it changes true to false false to true is it fine is it fine not function is fine not function is fine similarly there are other logical operators so we've used the logical operators is greater than <clears throat> we have greater than equal to you could have used over here instead of great equal to 35 you could have used equal to greater than equal to 35 or maybe less than equal to 35 you could have used less than equal to simply less than all these different functions right we can use greater than equal to also we can use simply equal to whatever it is so these are the different logical functions if and or not and these are the logical operators with and and or can we use more than yes you can use n number of logical conditions see when you give a comma over here you have logical 3 you have logical 4 you can use n number of logical operations but with not function with not function you can use only one logical condition what you could have done within this you could have used and function within this you can use or function but you can give only one in the if function also in the if statement also see within this if you can just give one logical test but you can use and function within this you can use or function within this you can use not function within this in the and function you can use multiple operations in the or function you can use multiple conditions in the not function again just one condition so generally we use and and or along with if we don't use and or separately we generally use it along with the if function is this clear all the logical functions logical operators greater than greater than equal to less than less than equal to there is something called as not equal to also um so how do we give not equal to i'll show you you'll not be using it a lot but how can you give if uh the value maybe is not equal to is you give uh, less than greater than sign if it is not equal to yes then the person is not a smoker or the person is a smoker just give me a second i'll show you what i have done okay so i want to hide few columns over here how can you hide few columns just select all the columns just select all the columns right click click on hide click on hide if you click on hide over here just right click and click on hide if you click on hide it will simply hide all the columns it does not mean that the columns are deleted it's just that the column is hidden so here what i have done i have written that if this e4 is not equal to this is the symbol for not equal to less than greater than if this is not equal to yes meaning the person is not a smoker the person is not a smoker or the person is a smoker if this is not equal to yes which means it is no if it's not equal to yes it's no if it's no meaning the person is not a smoker so i want the value to be a not smoker or a smoker i will drag this down stay this clear clear not equal to so what are the logical operators equal to not equal to greater than less than sign greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to these are the different logical operators i will just again write it down over here what are the different logical operators we have equal to we have greater than we have less than we have greater than equal to we have less than equal to we have not equal to so these are the different logical operators and what are the different logical functions that we have done we have done if and or not right and how to unhide the rows 
or the columns just simply select the two corresponding columns can you see uh, you might be seeing just a small you know thing over here this means that there are some columns hidden i will select this gnl right click and unhide the moment you click on unhide it will unhide all the columns for you see is it fine is it fine just write a yes great so we'll do it till here today i i have already shared the data with you all i will share the excel file also so you all know all the logical functions all the logical operators we have learned about cell referencing we have learned how to use excel as a calculator and now in the next class we'll be learning some numerical functions which are very common and which we use it a lot and it's very simple right so i will share this file with you all do practice this if you all have any questions you all can ask me in the next class and i will inform you all about the timing in the next class do you all have any queries specific to this class you all can ask now no no okay okay